And like that, we're back with another one. But before I get into this video, I want to take the time to thank you for clicking on this video and watching. And I want to take the time to send a big, big, big thank you to everybody that has subscribed and those that have been rocking with me since the very first video over two years ago. This video is by request. Uh, a viewer in a previous video, the PowerTech video, asked me to show how I train while rehabbing this dislocated shoulder that I dislocated back in January. So this is it, this is for you. You ask for it, you get it. Matter of fact, that PowerTech video where the person asked for this video was also by request. In another video, uh, someone asked me what this PowerTech machine does, the one that I'm sitting on right now. So this is it. Right now you just saw me take my pre-workout. I, I shotgun that, took that straight to the dome. Mixing the intra workout, which is a BCAA. It is a non-stimulus uh, pre-workout. I think it helps with the blood flow and the focus more without the caffeine because the first pre-workout already has that. And then just another uh, little, that little small white jar is just uh, some more amino acids. I'm gonna warm up my workouts. Start with a warm up, which is about 10 minutes long. I do a total of six minutes on this bike. Two minute warm up, and then the four, I jump right into the 2010 high intensity interval training, which is 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest, followed by another two minute cool down on the bike. So my warm up has a warm up. Um, but anyway, about this shoulder and the rehab. Right now, this is uh, chest. This is me training chest. This is going to be the first of a three-part series. I'm going to this one. This video is chest. The next video will be shoulders, and then the third video will be legs, in particular squats, because I've had some difficulty getting my hands behind the bar to support it when I squat down. So I'm going to show you what I do for that and how I worked around it the last couple of months dealing with this shoulder pain. And it still, it still bothers me to this day, six months later, still limited range of motion. But I'll get into that a little bit, a little bit later. So right now I'm still warming up, I'm doing my ab mat setups, give you a little different angle there. Yipper, I'm back. 10 burpees, you can laugh at them if you want. I absolutely hate burpees. Between burpees and lunges, uh, you, you can't give me two of my least favorite uh, exercises. Uh, nothing, nothing beats those, but I do them because I hate them. Okay, so. Here I'm just showing you the temperatures, 81 degrees. It is, mind you, it is 10 o'clock at night, I think it is. It is either nine or 10. I think it's 10. But anyway, I didn't film the first warm up set with the bar. I'm still doing a warm up. Uh, did the bar, I did about 15 or 20 reps with the bar, and then I jumped into 135. I think I knocked out about 15 sets there, too. I mean, 15 reps. And warming up still 185 here. I put the towel on my chest because the bar sometimes will, will scratch my chest, it'll irritate it. So um, the towel just gives a little bit more cushion so I can uh, come down a little bit forcefully, especially with my shoulder not being as strong as it was. The weight's a little bit harder to control when it gets heavier. And you can see here, I forgot to put it down. And this is my first working set of 225, and it was a grinder. I only got, I believe, five of them. So that was rough. That was like a shock. I, I took about a week off. I just came back from vacation the night before I shot this video. So a whole week without training. Second set went a little bit better. Got eight. I'm one of the... I'm the type of person that gets a, gets stronger as I go on, which is why it's good to have working sets. 
So the warm up is just that, it's warming up. But if I were just to do one top set of 225, I would have stopped at that first five rep set, set, which wouldn't have really done anything. So this is why for me it's beneficial to have working sets and I do three. And this is the third set and I believe I get 10 at this weight of 225. So first set five, and as I get warm, as you can see I'm just getting going and I'm able to knock out 10 on my third set. So got stronger as it went on. But I give myself an hour to work out because I have other things to do. And by keeping it at that hour limit, it eliminates the rest time. It eliminates, eliminates me playing on my phone. I just gotta knock it out. So from there, we do some incline dumbbells. I do three sets, I only film two. Started with 55, and this is just to get some of that unilateral work. I think the key, if someone were to ask me what's the number one way that I rehab my shoulder, how I was able to keep some of the strength and, and the training going without sacrificing anything, is unilateral work. I do a ton of dumbbell work. In this training session, I only do dumbbells here. But uh, when I first injured the shoulder, there was no barbell. It was 100% dumbbells, which is fine. You can definitely get a nice chest workout with dumbbells. You might not get stronger, and, and if you know if you're working as a power lifter, you're not going to do anything. But for rehab purposes, to get that blood flow, dumbbells, 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 dumbbells. dumbbells. That was the third set. I think that was like 65 pounds. And like I like I said, man, my 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 breaks are super short. I'm flying through this. Here I got the football bar, the multi-degrip bar, the Swiss bar, whatever you call it. The bar itself is 45 pounds it's from road, and so a total 135, and I do a superset. I don't do the closest grip because as you can see, my next exercise is gonna tackle that, that inner chest that the close grip would simulate. So I do the grips in the middle and then superset it with these type of plate push-outs. I don't know what they're called. But um, as far as the shoulder go, it was really hurting this night. Like it, it was, there was some issue as you could see, as you saw with that 225. So it's not 100% heal. I don't know if it ever will be. I've never dislocated my shoulder for the first time. And it's been six months and it still gives me problems. So I haven't lifted, I haven't like maxed out or anything like that in a while. And here we are, I did two sets of that. So I did basically six sets of the barbell, three sets of the dumbbell, and then two super sets of this. Multi-grip and plate, standing plate press, push out, whatever you wanna call them. That last rep was a grinder. You see, I had to rest for a little bit before I push it off my chest. Throw myself up. For those who are wondering, the dog is not dead. Like I said, I just got back from vacation the night before. So we picked him up this day, uh, that day. About, we picked him up about 10 hours ago. So he was in the kennel for six days. So he's just exhausted. And he wanted to he wanted to be with me. He wouldn't leave my side when we picked him up. So he insisted on coming in, into the gym. The fan is on him. It's 81 degrees at like 11 o'clock at night now. But uh, the fan's on him. And he managed to go to sleep the entire session I was in there. That's it. I finished it up with that. So yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock at night. And stay tuned for part two. Shoulders. Thank you all.